ventilation systems. Every engine has one and every engine needs one. But when your factory system with the really small ports on it just isn't enough for your high revving monster, you gotta actually change it up a little bit. And that's what we're gonna go over today only on the Fabrication Series. During normal engine operation, the engine turns at a high rate of speed. So all of the crankshaft, the rods, the pistons, the cams, everything inside of it is all moving around at a high rate of speed. Sometimes higher than others, depending on how fast you drive. Now, inside of all of that, while all of that's spinning around there, you have fumes, you have oil, you have moisture, you have uh, you know fuel vapor, you have all kinds of junk that's floating around inside of that engine, which we effectively call crank waste. Now the ventilation system is designed to relieve the excess pressure with all of that crankcase and in a factory system it sends it back around to the inside, the intake manifold or the intake system and burns it all off, part of the emissions. But you realize that on a small system like this, on a factory system, especially where there's only one port up top where this little barb or this valve nipple right here is sitting, that's probably not going to be enough in a high performance engine application. And in some engines, uh, specifically Honda for example, they even have uh, boxes built onto the side of the block that actually relieve some of the crank uh, waste and pressure and everything else like that. So what's typical, and you see this in a lot of high performance engine applications, is when they take a larger uh, port and weld it right onto the front of the engine or onto the valve cover, sometimes you stick them on the side of blocks. I put them just about everywhere, even on engine oil dipsticks. So it's common practice to actually uh, toss a couple of these on here, run it into, say, like a catch can, for example, or an oil water separator to basically separate all that crank waste and increase your ventilation. That's all it does. That's really all it is. It's very, very simple. But there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. When it comes down to the actual material of the valve cover itself, there's one thing that you have to identify about that and what material it's made out of. Now, there are two common types of metal used in valve cover construction, one of them being stamped steel. Now, you can usually find out if it's stamped steel or not, which would, would kind of indicate a good indicator of this one is by use of a magnet. If you stick a magnet on it, and obviously if the magnet sticks, you got steel. The other one is to find out when you flip it over on the inside, most alloy valve covers are left bare or raw on the inside of it, whereas some steel ones are actually not. They're coated on the inside, sometimes chrome plated, some of them powder coated, some of them even left alone. But a magnet is a very good way of actually finding out what it is. When it comes to alloy valve covers, there are typically two that you find, one of them being aluminum and the other one being magnesium. Now it's very important that you identify which one is which or which one you have. Because if you use, let's say, you have a magnesium valve cover and you try to weld an aluminum fitting on it with an aluminum filler rod, you can literally flick that fitting like a booger after you're done welding it and that'll go rolling and flying away and not make a happy customer out of the person that came in to get that service done. So what you need to do is find out which one is which. Now, you can go out and research a whole bunch and, you know, jump onto forums and, you know, content and whatnot all over the place and read a bunch of hearsay and take a good guess, or you can use a $2 solution, which in this case is nothing more than white vinegar. Now, white vinegar is an excellent, excellent solution to finding out if you have a magnesium cast or an aluminum cast. Now, the reason why is because white vinegar will react differently with each metal. Now, in the case of magnesium, if you put white vinegar on a piece of magnesium or a magnesium cast, it will start bubbling up and it'll, it'll get white and foggy or whatever the case is, and you'll see it actually react to magnesium. In the case of aluminum, you get nothing. And when I mean nothing, I say that when I pour it on here, and if this is aluminum, it will actually stay on there clear as day, just like a drop of water. So before you actually get pouring it on there, you need to take an inconspicuous area, such as the inside of the valve cover on the wall, and clean it off really well. In fact, we'll do a couple of them, just to, you know, for safety's sake of things, let's just make sure that we're very thorough here. We'll take our white vinegar. We'll put a little dabble on the inside. Put a little on there, kind of let it sit for a second there, looks like nothing. Let's test out the bottom here just to be on the safe side, we'll just dump a little on there, Let's swirl around. Notice how it looks like nothing more than water, of course if you were here in person and you smelled it you would know it was definitely not water, that is in fact vinegar, 
Now, since there was no reaction at all, we know that we have an aluminum valve cover, which means that our aluminum fittings with our aluminum filler rod will absolutely service this valve cover and we can get to work on it. Now, after verifying that this is made out of aluminum, of course, we can get to work on it. So let's take a look at this factory port here. Now, this is great for standard size. These are usually 3 8 10 millimeters, somewhere in that range, depending on which one you want to uh, you know work it as if you measured the inside which I already have on this one It's just over a quarter of an inch inside diameter. That's the maximum flow capability that it has So what we're gonna do is say that that's not enough for this particular application And we're gonna add something else which in this case we're gonna add a dash 10 an Weld port which the inside diameter of this is almost a half of an inch we're not going to add one, we're going to add two, which we're effectively quadrupling the amount of flow capability that this valve cover is capable of doing. One thing that we need to check out real quick here is the baffling. Now taking a look at the inside of it, we've got this flipped over now, and the barb or nipple or port up top is buried underneath all of this baffling here. And the area that we want to add is in the front of the valve cover, which is under this baffling right here. So if we were to take a look at this and sight down here, we can notice that we can almost see all the way through, which means we have enough wall and we have enough material on this end right here to add these ports to, no problem. So some instances you'll end up having to remove some of the baffling. Some of them you'll actually want to tear it out. Some people do it just to make it lightweight. But the more baffling you remove here, the more your catch can is going to fill up with oil and crank waste and all kinds of other stuff. The baffling actually does help separate most of that crank waste to the excess oil and uh, actually still increase the flow and ventilation. So in this case, in this valve cover, we're just going to leave it alone and we're going to pop our holes in the front of it. Before we actually get these uh, attached here, we're going to have to prep and clean this up. So we're going to take a wire wheel and get all of this off of here. So with these two spots cleaned up, let's take a measure and see how much of a hole we need to cut in the size of here to actually get these to fit in here so we can weld them on. Take a caliper, measure the lip on the inside here. Looks like we have three quarters of an inch. So a three quarter inch hole here and a three quarter inch hole here will get the job done. Now a relatively easy way of marking these ones out here, we're just gonna take a marker here, stick it inside the hole, and place it up right about where I want. There's one. There's the other. So we're gonna drill these two out here, get to welding those in. Now expecting a three quarter inch drill bit to go straight in is a little bit ambitious. So what we're gonna do is pilot this out and then I'm gonna use a three quarter inch hole saw to actually get a nice even round cut. Now when it comes to the hole saw, I'm gonna take my time on that and let it cut nice and round so that way both fittings can be better positioned. So start with a pilot. Now one thing is equally important as making sure that your metal is prepped up right on the valve cover is to make sure that your fittings are actually prepped up and the rod itself. Now what I've done already is hit these with a the scotch brite and made sure that all of this is nice and clean and ready to be welded because unfortunately uh, cast aluminum brings out all kinds of impurities and uh, basically everything otherwise known as junk into your weld. So I'm going to set this up, throw down a couple of tacks here and get this all welded up. Now, being that this is cast, it's not likely that these welds are going to win the Stack of Dimes award, but rest assured, as long as your skills are true, they'll definitely hold. So we're going to let this cool down real quick and we'll give it our final prep and finish and send it back to the customer. So I'm just giving this kind of one final prep here, get a little bit cleaned up, and we'll basically get it ready for coating. So, we could send this out to have it coated up, stripped down, and you know, redone again or whatever, but the customer wants to do whatever he'd like to do on it on, all on his own on that one. So that's pretty much how it goes as far as uh, getting fittings welded in. But some of you might say, 
How do I go about getting fittings in there if I don't have a welder? Okay, let's face it, not everybody does. There's a couple of different things that you can do. Now, before, where I mentioned that we had a very tight tolerance on those fittings, where we cut that hole almost identical to where it needed to be, that's very crucial. And in fact, one of the things that you can do is actually take these weld bungs and you can use a very strong two-part epoxy and actually well, glue the fittings into the valve cover if you want to, as long as your tolerances are very, very tight and you follow the directions or instructions with the two-part epoxy. There are some of them that will fuse it, literally fuse it from one to the other, and it will actually look uh, very, very clean at the same time. Another option is to use fittings, threaded type. So what you do is you go out and you purchase the correct size fitting that you need, you drill the hole, you tap it in, you screw the fitting on there. I typically use O-ring style fittings because they'll sit flush on the end of it. This one is an 18 millimeter, this one is I believe a 14 millimeter, and uh, it actually works out quite well. Now certain vehicles like this Evo next to me here that you've seen in the entire video, it actually has threaded fittings on the, the engine itself where it comes out of, and that's a factory uh, port that we used on that one when we set it up for the catch can. So it's entirely possible to use the threaded style fittings in, in just about anything. Uh, if you don't have one that is factory threaded, you can go through and drill it out, tap it, and then thread that in there. That's a no weld solution. Make sure you put a good sealer on there and something where it won't vibrate itself out of it. And of course, again, if you have the capabilities to thread one in or to find one that matches your threaded capabilities on your factory valve cover, by all means, grab one of those and then toss it on there. So in all honesty, I mean, now that you see how it's done, it's really not that difficult to do. All it takes is a little bit of attention to detail and, of course, the general knowledge of exactly how to do it, which we've covered in this video here. So, just remember a couple of things. You can weld them, you can thread them in, you can actually epoxy them if you really wanted to do it. Of course, in this one, we welded it because that's, you know, one of the easiest methods and, of course, that's what the customer wanted to see out of it. So there are different ways to achieve a high-performance vented valve cover, a high-performance ventilation system. It's very easy to do and all you got to do is pay attention to the details. Now, if you are still not certain about this or you want somebody else to manage this one, please drop me an email and I will tell you all about the service that is available here at the shop. All you have to do is ship it down, we go over the details and send it right back to you in whatever form and fashion you want it in. So, that's all I have for this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching as usual. If you need to get in touch with me, send me an email on the fabricationseries.com website. Drop me a line on Facebook, Instagram. Send a line in the comments here. I always try to get back to you. So, again, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next episode.